who we just heard the vice president lace into President Trump, saying that this country has been divided with hatred and that we need to fix it and not fight, calling on some of the better angels of our nature, which will likely be a major campaign theme of his, besides some of the policy issues uh, that he outlined in his speech that we just heard. All this comes as a new Fox News poll finds that Mr. Biden is leading Vermont Senator Sanders by 18 points already. But of course, election day is a long way away. So how long could the vice president's momentum last and that lead continue? That's a great question. We want to talk about it now with our political panel. Uh, Jake McCoby is here. He's a former chief speech writer for Attorney General Loretta Lynch and a former policy advisor to the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. John Thomas also with us. He's the founder and president of Thomas Partners Strategies and a Republican pollster. Uh, boy, I'm, I'm sure you were listening. And uh, I'm going to start with you, Jake. And you know, one of the, one of the the things that uh, notes that Vice President Biden ended off. He says the single most important thing we have to accomplish is defeat Donald Trump. That and unity. So Jake, is this why Joe Biden is resonating right now? And what will it take for the former VP to sustain the lead that he has over the other Democratic candidates? Well, I think it's certainly clear from, from this speech, from this event that we just saw, why President Trump is afraid of Joe Biden. It's because he, he's clearly capable of doing the job, and he clearly cares about the future of this country and the American people. And that comes across, uh, and that comes across pretty clearly. People can understand that, and that's pretty... Uh, significant contrast with the current occupant of the White House. But the reality is there are a ton of extraordinary Democrats running, and all of them are polling either ahead of or competitively with the president. And there's a reason for that, and it's because any one of them uh, would protect and expand health care rights in this country. Any one of them would invest in the education and infrastructure that uh, provides opportunity in this country. Um, any one of them would help to unrig the economic system that sends uh, money from workers to the wealthy. And I think Ameri the American people respond to that. They understand that. That's why Democrats are doing well. Okay, I understand, and we want to be sure, that, to be clear, that, yes, it's very early, and, and, and by no means are we suggesting that Vice President Biden is going to be definitely the Democratic nominee. We're not saying that we're focusing on him today because he had the rally there just now, and also someone rallying today is uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. John, asking you now, you know, how does Bernie Sanders fight back, and should he strictly pack political punches, or will he get personal? Well, I actually think Sanders is still the candidate to be in the Democratic primary. He more closely aligns with the heart and soul of Demo where the passion of Democratic voters are right now, which is, quite frankly, far to the left. He is the purity candidate when it comes to, you know, all these other candidates that are running are kind of Johnny-come-latelys. They, they weren't socialists, but they are Democratic socialists now because it's cool to be so. So I think Sanders is playing it smart. I think his support will stand with him. And I think uh, Biden's support is way overestimated right now for a couple reasons. First, it's largely a function of name ID. Biden is probably one of the best known politicians in the world. So I think ID is number one. Number two, the reason he's doing well besides ID is the promise that he can beat Trump. But the second that promise starts to look shaky, meaning uh, Biden underperforms with a fundraising quarter, he has a gaffe uh, that okay, looks Okay, let me stop you right people. there. Let me the, stop the you right there, John, look, because I want to get uh, Jake a chance to respond because. Uh, Rightly so, John, you're the Republican on this panel, and so you're going to you know, have a particular uh, spin on it because that's what we do. That's what you do and understand that. The other side no, does it as I'm well, not. not just saying you. But, but I want to stop for a second because, um, Jake, I need you to, to respond. John is sitting here saying that, oh, yeah, Joe Biden, he's, he's polling now uh, with the Democrats because they're, they're, um, you know, he uh, it says, promises to beat Donald Trump. There's no guarantee that it can beat Donald Trump. He's also saying that, uh, you know, re re the Democrats really want a socialist. So, Jake, I mean, you heard it. You get a chance. You jump in there. Tell me what you're thinking when you're hearing these comments. Well, the truth is, and this is going to be an unsatisfying answer, is that it could go both ways. This is a long primary season, and we've seen in the past, you know, both 
expanded, uh, inflated polling leads that have collapsed as time went on. And we've seen people, even like mm -hmm. Donald Trump in 2016, uh, who got in with a lead and held it the entire time. So it's really hard to say, but that's why you have this extended primary season, not just the primaries in, Iowa, in the caucuses in New Hampshire, the, excuse me, the caucus in Iowa, the primary in New Hampshire, and the whole series of primaries and caucuses after that, but this whole process that leads up to that point so that everybody can kick the tires and can see what these candidates represent. But again, more than a candidate, we're picking a candidate right now, but we're also talking about uh, a platform and policy. Um, and that's, I think, what people are mostly responding to. That's why this well, whole field of Democrats Well, he mentioned Social Security, health care, and climate change. Social Security, health care, yep. and climate change. Will that resonate with the voters? For yeah. sure. I think that all yeah. those issues res resonate with, with, with voters. With right now, we're talking about getting. Let me hang on one sec. I'm gonna. I know. I know you're there, John, and I'm definitely gonna give you a chance to wrap this up because I don't want to be unfair to you at all. But Jake, I'm asking you those policy issues that Vice President Biden pointed out there at the rally today. Again, Social Security, health care, and climate change. Well, is this what it takes for him to become the president again? I think that's partly what's going to take for anybody, uh, anybody on the Democratic side to be president is looking to the future and trying to tackle the challenges we face. And those are three big ones. Um, and, and whether a candidate can speak compellingly about those things um, is going to determine whether they become president. But I think it is, it is extremely important, and you're seeing that now, for people to be able to draw a contrast between approaching these issues with an eye to the future and an eye to the kind of country that we can be versus President Trump's approach, which is to look back to a past that never was and say, we can be that again. Um, and, and I think the future is always going to be more compelling. And that's what the vice president was talking about. Yeah, he says that uh, we need a clean energy revolution and we have to stop thinking that clean energy and job, job placement uh, don't go together. They do. Okay, John, in fairness to you, I want to get you back in there. One of the things that uh, Vice President Biden says that he says... I know how to make government work, not because I talked or tweeted about it, but because I've done it. I know how to work across the aisle. And he mentioned again his, uh, his uh, platform of Social Security, health care, and climate change. So, um, John, back to you. So is Biden really the one that President Trump wants to take on? I think Trump honestly can probably beat any of the cast of characters that are running at this point. And I just look at one stat. It's ironic that uh, Biden relaunched his campaign in Pennsylvania, a place where unemployment under Joe Biden's watch was 5.2 percent, but is currently 3.8 percent. This, these are numbers that affect anybody who runs against President Trump. And I'll draw one more thing. I think where Joe Biden's numbers are inflated in South Carolina, for instance, Joe Biden is capturing 58 percent of the African American vote. Kamala Harris is at 12 percent. Cory Booker's at sub 10 percent. Those numbers are going to move. I think Joe's uh, just this is his moment in the sunshine. I don't think it's going to last uh, because he just uh, I don't think he has uh, what it takes for the heart and soul of the Democratic who, primary. Who at this does? Point. Who does? <laughs> uh, good question. I, if I had to put a bet on it today, I would say Bernie Sanders, simply because one thing we learned from Trump uh, in 2016 was that you don't have to have support in the 40s. You have to be in the mid to high 20s if you have a fractured field. But I would caution this last thing. I'll close on this, Arthel, is that at this date today in 2015, Donald Trump had not even come down the escalator yet. So it still is early days. It definitely is still early. And President Trump is definitely the one to beat. And he is going to be a tough contender. No doubt about that. Jake McCoby and John Thomas, thanks to both of you.